All right, I'm going to start on mine. Well, Mrs. I'm Ms. McGinnis, by the way. I um, teach Communications 101 here at the college as well as at the Cambridge Center uh, down in Cambridge, and I will be teaching the dedicated Easton High School Monday, Wednesday, 8 a.m. I still have spots, a dual enrollment course at Easton High School. So I teach Fundamentals of Oral and Organizational Communication. So again, my name is Ms. McGinnis. So not surprisingly, many of you have the same fears, right? And I'm seeing some themes here. So the first is the workload. If there's a test and papers due every day, time management, how am I going to manage it all? All the older kids, so not, you know, if you're not taking a dedicated college course at your high school, you're not going to know who's in your class. Getting to know everyone, getting lost on campus is another one. Not knowing where I'm going, failing, failing, failing. So, <laughs> so why do you think we had you do this exercise then? To show what? That everybody has the same fear. Yeah, everybody has the same fears. And the reason why we're here today is that before you walk in that classroom on the first day, we want to alleviate some of those fears. And hopefully we'll do that by going through, uh, kind of briefly tonight, some of the things that you can expect. So I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Holly, and she's going to talk to you a little bit about success strategies. OK, my name is Jennifer Holly. I teach the psychology courses. I teach the dedicated high school class at Easton High School. Um, but I also teach in the Cambridge Center, and I also teach here, so I'm all over the place. Um, one of the things that we, when we talk about college and what's different about college, um, to just say, remember that this is a college course might not really help you that much if you've never had a college course. So we decided to kind of um, bullet items there for you. Um, develop a study schedule. Uh, many of you are doing sports. You are working. You are doing community service projects. You have a lot on your plate. And so really the key to be successful is that you really need to organize how, what works best for you. And this may not happen for you right away. This may, you may have to go through a week of class or two weeks of class to figure out when is the best time to get your psychology 150 homework done or when's the best time to work on your speeches. Um, but definitely try to stick to a schedule and that will help you remain consistent. Um, don't procrastinate. What's procrastination? What is it? Waiting till the last minute. Where are you? Do I have procrastinators in here? Come on. Come on. We're among friends. Yes. Um, I as well. OK, I as well. And while this strategy, and I talk, actually, I talk a lot about this in Psych 150 because it's about anxiety. And some of you need a really high anxiety level to function. Like, you need that. Come on. Have you started it yet? Have you started your project? You need that. Um, but I will tell you that while that strategy may work okay in high school, the assignments are much more rigorous in college, and that strategy starts to unravel or fall apart if you wait till the very last minute to get assignments done. So I really encourage you to rework or rethink that strategy as you continue um, with college. Come to class. Um, every semester, I do a statistical analysis of my classes, and it's bottom line, those students who come do better than those students who don't. Um, and some of you know who you are. Have you ever missed a class and tried to get somebody else's notes? And does it make sense? Probably not. Some of you are very auditory. You need to hear the information, right? And you need to, you're visual. You need to see somebody saying the information. So please make sure you come to class. Make it a priority, OK? Uh, be prepared to work on your own outside of class. Um, there is a high expectation in college. Um, it's kind of a trend that we flip our classrooms. And a lot of what's happening is we expect you to do a lot of the reading and a lot of the information gathering on your own outside of class. Contrary to high school, a lot of times in high school, you will get the lecture in class, and then you go out of class and you do the assignment. It's almost the reverse. We expect you to do the reading and information gathering outside of class, and then come into class and engage in meaningful discussion. And you cannot do that if you have not done the work outside of class. So it's really, really important that you crack the seal on the textbook that you open it up and you do a little highlighting and that you actually read the material. Um, communicate with your instructor. This is huge. Um, more than anything, I would say this is one of the most 
purposeful or meaningful ways to achieve success in your college courses is to maintain communication. We can't help if we don't know, right? So you need to communicate. And so I'm going to turn it over to Amber, um, to Ms. McGinnis, to talk about um, ways you can communicate. Who prefers text message in here? Oh, come on. I know you all do. All of my students. Come on. Seriously. How many people said one text message a day? Come on. There's more than that, right? How many people send an email? Email. Okay. How many people, you know, your phone can actually dial and you can talk to people? How many people do that a day? Because I know you don't listen to your voicemails anymore. All right, so I'm the communications professor, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit in communications class about how to communicate. And it's a little different in college, because here's the deal. How many of you have your high school professor's uh, cell phone numbers? Maybe, maybe not. Every one of my 125 students has my cell phone number. Now, can you call me at 11 p.m. on Saturday night? No, because I'm sleeping. I have a three and a six-year-old. You might be up doing work, but I'm not. But you can call me on a Monday night. You can call me on a Saturday morning and ask me a question. Uh, how you communicate with your instructor is really going to be up to mainly your instructor. Unlike your hot, dedicated high school, we have policies and procedures here for communication, but each instructor is different. You might have an adjunct instructor. That's an instructor who only teaches part-time. So they have a full-time, completely different job that they go to, and they just teach one night a week. So you may only be able to get hold of them via Canvas message. Sorry. Or email. They might give you their cell phone number. Some professors will not give you their cell phone number. They'll only give you your office number. So. The message here is you need to speak with your individual professors or on their syllabus and figure out how do they prefer to be contacted. What is the easiest way that I can talk to that instructor? Because it's not going to be common. You know, you might not have the benefit of being able to stop by their classroom every day because you're not going to be in this environment every day or they may not be in your environment every day. Uh, most full-time faculty members do hold office hours, five hours of office hours. That means I'm sitting in my office just waiting for you to come ask me a question. Now, if you're at Easton High, like I'm teaching my Easton High class, and not all of you are at Easton High, but as an example, if you're at Easton High, you're not going to probably be able to come to my office hours because they're going to be at the Cambridge Center here. So that's why, again, phone, email, Canvas message is probably a better bet. Now Canvas, you're going to hear Canvas a lot. Is anybody familiar with Canvas? Yes? No? Okay. Canvas is essentially what's called our learning management software. And it's very similar to PowerSchool, I think some of the different counties use. But it's really, it's, it's really an awesome, awesome teaching tool. And for those parents, times have changed. We don't hand out assignments anymore. So your son or daughter is not going to come home with an assignment. It's all going to be online. It's all going to be on campus. Not every instructor, but most instructors. Also, students submit everything via Canvas a lot of times. I'm pulling it up right now. And we're going to cover this a little bit later, and you'll probably also get a little bit more with your individual instructors. But you really need to think about how your instructor wants to be communicated with and communicate with us. I, again, I am very <coughs> flexible. If you have a doctor's appointment or you have something going on, I'll work with you ahead of time. But college is a little different. If you miss a major presentation and you come back and say, well, you see I had this doctor's appointment, I might come back and say, you know, that's something you needed to schedule with me ahead of time, right? So again, there's parents. Do you just blow off your work and not tell your boss you're not coming in? No, you say, hey, I got a doctor's appointment in. I won't be in on Friday. Kind of the same thing there. So with the individual instructors, figure out how they are best communicated with and make sure you're addressing um, your needs and their needs through the different means of communication. <laughs> Parents, and I, this is the first session, so you're going to go next door and hear a little bit more from the administration side. I think side. they're staying here. I think we're going. Oh, we're staying? I think we're going. Oh, we're they're going. staying. All right, so you'll I hear believe. a little bit more in the session. <laughs> from the folks who come over from the other room. Uh, this was a little uncomfortable for some of my parents of my dual enrollees last time I taught at the high school setting. Even though you've paid for the class, 
even though your students are underage, under FERPA, which is the Federal Education Rights and Privacy Act, I cannot discuss the grade of your son or daughter without their written permission. I know that sounds crazy to you, uh, but that's just the way. Now, if you give permission, we can talk about it. But I would encourage you. Okay. I would encourage Me you. Me too. I hear, I hear, the I hear it happen. now. I hear it. I'm not giving permission. I'm giving <laughs> But one, students, I would encourage you to have an adult and inter, you know, interactive discussion with your parents about your grades, right? Because this is the next step for you. You might go away to college in a couple years or next year or in the fall, and mom and dad have no interaction with you about your grades. So take this opportunity to have an honest, dynamic conversation with your parents where you are the lead but you're giving them the information. So for instance, you know, Johnny's mom texts me, or excuse me, emails me and says, hey, Ms. McGinnis, I'm really concerned about Johnny's grade. Can we sit down and talk about it? And I've had this happen before. And I say, you know what, Mrs. Smith, from a parental standpoint, I completely understand that. Um, but I need to discuss that with Johnny. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to talk to Johnny about his grade and then let you and Johnny have a conversation about that. <coughs> All right, so this is where I'm gonna put it on you guys. Um, have that conversation with your student. Force your student to take the lead and have that conversation with you. Because we're trying to really prep them and get them ready for that four-year college or coming back full-time to Chesapeake. Okay, so what to do before classes start? What do you need to do or what should you do um, to prepare for that first day of class? Okay, the first thing that you should do, since you are all registered, you should be able to log on to My Campus. If you cannot get into My Campus, you see that need help right there? There is a call number right there. I cannot reset passwords. So if you come on the first day and you're not able to get into My Campus, I can't fix that for you. Faculty cannot fix that. You have got to contact the help desk, and it's right here. It tells you there's the number, it's right on the main page where you try to log in, okay? So that's really important that you guys try to be able to get into my campus um, prior to the first day of class. That's very important, okay? Um, well, why is that important? Well, this is where you will access everything. This is where you will access Canvas, which is where your class information is going to be. This is where you, where you will access, and you will see this when you guys log in. You will see Canvas, Tutoring, Web Advisor, Slash Crab, and Skipjack email. Canvas is exactly what Ms. McGinnis was just talking about. It's our new learning management system. Um, I used it, my students, I brought two of my students that had me last semester. Um, I use it extensively. Um, a lot of, um, most faculty put their grades on it, put assignments on it. There should be no surprise at the end of the semester where you're sitting with your grades. Canvas keeps a running total. So it's not like, ah, you didn't know that the grade was coming up. It's all right there in Canvas for you, okay? This is where you will find your syllabi. Now, I just want to share with you, some faculty will make their course available early. So you may be able to get into your Canvas course early. I will tell you, I've been informed that on the 20th, okay, which is Monday, not this Monday coming up, but next Monday, classes start on the 21st. But I've been told that Monday there will be a mass publish after 4.30. So sometime Monday evening, you all should be able to access your Canvas course. If you go on Canvas, can you go back up to courses right there, Emmer? Mm -hmm. You should see a list of your courses on that drop-down menu. If something is missing, if you don't see your Com 150, you know, 101 or your Psych 150 and you are enrolled or your Soch 161 or whatever, you need to contact the registrar because there's been a, a, a situation, <coughs> something's happened, it could be just a glitch. Okay, but you should be able to see all of your classes that you're enrolled in Monday the 20th in the evening. Yes? Okay, so th this is kind of, you know, and every course will look a little bit different, and I assure you, right, you'll get familiar with it, right? You felt comfortable by the end, okay? So, and I do a lot of this first week of the semester, I do a lot of walking you through this process too, as do many faculty. So we make sure you can get on, we make sure you can log in, but please, 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 I can't emphasize enough that you really should try to do this before the first day of class so that we're not spending the whole first day of class trying to log on. And again, if you can't get on, 
I can't reset that in class. You still have to go and contact Help Desk. Download the Canvas app. There is an app that you can download if you go to your iTunes store or whatever um, application store you use and you do Canvas by Instructure, you do that search, you can actually download that app to your phone and what comes up, like grades will come up, you, you can, can message. Grades, you can submit assignments if you so. have a notepad, you can see what's due, you can, yeah, so, everything. So there's a number of things you can do from your uh, mobile device. So that's a definite positive with Canvas. Uh, review the course syllabus, that's the next thing. Um, Canvas will definitely have your course syllabus up. Also, there are faculty web pages. One of the things I encourage you to do, and go click to number four, is explore the um, oh. Chesapeake website. I was just going to click on yeah. that. Yeah, let me go okay. to this. Um, if, you, if you go on to the Chesapeake web page, one of the things that you're going to be able to do is just explore that web page. Look at all the tools that are available to you. Um, she's looking up right now my faculty web page, and there's, there's myself and my husband. Um, what you will see here, oh, I can't walk over there because I'll go off the screen, but over on the side where there's, it's all blank, that's where you'll see links to the syllabi. So the syllabi will be posted on there. If you can't log into Canvas for some reason or you're away and you can't remember your log on, all you have to do is go to the faculty webpage of your faculty member and you will also see this. The other advantage to this that I really like is let's say you're thinking about taking a course in the future. Like I've heard some good things about Ms. McGinnis's comm class. I wonder what she does in that class. You can go right to her faculty webpage and you can pull up the syllabus to see what she's already doing in that class. So you can get a good idea of how much the workload is or what the situation is to see if it fits in with your schedule. So it's a really good, um, good place to go, a good resource. Um, and finally, talk to previously dual enrolled students. Um, I have two here tonight that are gonna speak a little bit about their experiences, but it's a great idea to you know, ask somebody who is another dual enrolled student, what their experience was or what they did to make it successful and that can really help as well. All right, so you've logged into my campus, you've logged into Canvas and now it's the first day of classes. So here's some things you can kind of expect on the first day of classes and some of you may have heard, oh, for college class, you just show up and get the syllabus and then you go home, uh, which is not always the case. So the first thing you're going to do in the class is probably review this syllabus with the instructor. The syllabus is kind of a contract of sorts that occur between the student and the teacher. It lists all the policies, the expectations of the instructor. The instructor is also going to go over their expectations for the course, their grading scale, the assignments, the percentage of value. So for instance, my presentations are worth 60% of your grade in my course. That's something I want you to know about. They're also going to go over the schedule. Now, how many of you are taking a class only at a dedicated high school? So, for instance, dual enrollment at Easton High, at Kent County High. All right, so that doesn't apply to a ton of you. It's going to be a little different for you. If you're taking a class at the high school, so if you're taking my class at the high school, it's going to be a little different in that you have a spring break. Uh, like, for instance, Easton High has a spring break in April. Chesapeake has a spring break in March. So you're not going to have class at Easton High in March when we don't have class, but you're going to have my class at the high school when Easton High is on break. You see where it can get confusing. Uh, there's also some issues with fog delays and whatnot, but work with, through with your instructor at the dedicated high school And even classes. if you guys are on campus, the on campus, the college schedule applies. So whatever the college schedule is, so it's the same with your breaks. If your high school breaks, if Chesapeake College is still in session, you will be here and you will be expected to be here. So if there's a you know, plan accordingly or plan ahead of time, look at that. That might not be something that you've thought about. So you need to think about that when it comes time to um, sign up for, well, you've all signed up, but when it, comes, when it gets there, if you've planned a trip, if something's happened, you need to let your instructor know as soon as possible um, to give them the opportunity uh, to possibly work with you about that. Yes? If you're saying too, like if there's um, professional days at the high school and uh -huh. you know, they're off, that doesn't apply here. So you, if, you, right. if you have morning here, let's just say you still come here, you just don't go for your afternoon in the high school. Correct. It, your high school classes will be what they are, but you're, yes. Right. And even if you have it at Easton High School, mm -hmm. like if I'm at the high school and it's, a, it's an in-service day for faculty and it's not for Chesapeake, I will be there ready to teach. Right. 
So it's, it's, we adhere to this schedule. Okay. It's a little confusing. Why, can you pull up the academic calendar? Yeah. So for instance, I know a lot of, like I know my ch children's school has off for President's Day. We don't have off for President's Day. What about bad weather delays? You used to okay. call the Board of Ed like, and say, and they would tell you it's okay. different here. If they're coming to campus, okay, of course we don't want them to risk life and limb, okay, right? And I would say this to any of my students. If it's horrible where you live, I don't expect you to risk life and limb to get here. However, if the high school's closed or delayed due to fog or weather and we're open, the expectation is that you will be there. Now, if I'm teaching at the dedicated high school and there's a fog delay, we don't meet. Um, but yes, your so expect your discretion if you're coming to the college. If, if you're coming, off, you know their classes are here, not at the high school. Correct. So it's it's the we don't. If we're open, we're open. You're open, right? So, so we that, expect you to be there. Otherwise, if they announce that also Chesapeake College is, do you guys have delays? The same thing. Uh, we occasionally, we will. How have many have we had, Joe? We've only had like a couple. Okay, none since I've been here. Because we're five counties, and we're spread from right. the northern. Yeah, none since I've been here. But or earthquake, you know, you can't just be. Right. So it worked. I mean, even if Tolbert's 90 minutes late, Queen Anne, Caroline, but the other two. Forget you gotta have all of them. And and I would recommend if you notice what I have pulled up right now. I just went to the home page and pulled up. Um, you can pull up the academic calendar, and it's all right here. And it's an easy printable sheet. You can have it in front of you, and you can look at the days that don't. That's what I did. You guys, when I make up your, the syllabi, that's what I do, and then I address that in class and say hey by the way you will note that on two great example is um, Talbot County has off on Tuesday our classes here start on Tuesday you will be expected to come on Tuesday if you have a Tuesday class even though your high school is not open so right away out of the gate we're getting you know so that's this is a great and this you go to schedule to have page, you go to I yeah. think, academic yes and, and it's right here academic, academic calendar. calendar and it'll come right up the most recent one and if you okay. can just really quickly scroll down to the bottom all the way to the bottom the final exam schedule there in May is posted as well yeah right here so when it comes time for finals it'll probably be in your individual syllabi but if you're concerned about when your final exam is because sometimes they they kind of clash with AP exams perhaps, um, you want to take a look at this and make arrangements with your professor if you're supposed to have a final when you're supposed to take an AP exam at the high school. All right, so we're going to be going over the schedule, the syllabus, all of those things the first day of class, and we will also be jumping right into the content. I know in my class, we go over personalities and temperaments, and the first day you get a homework assignment of going home looking up your personality, taking an online personality quiz, and completing a worksheet um, to be ready again to come to class to discuss the results of that information. And I have an orientation, so it's an online orientation that has to be done the first week. So it's... So be prepared to start, okay? It's, it's, it's the days of just kind of going over the syllabus are over. Uh, we want to take <laughs> advantage of every possible teaching moment. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm gonna, not going to go through this in depth, but I did, we do want to let you know what is available. So you have access to a wealth of academic resources here at the college. <coughs> the first being the library databases. So in addition to your high school libraries or your county libraries, there is an online database system that you can access at home. And trust me, students, you will learn in excruciating yes. detail about information literacy yes. and how to access those databases, ebooks, journals, NoodleBib, etc. In addition, we do have in person and online tutoring available. We have a fantastic academic resource center here uh, on the campus. So if you need some help with writing or math or college bio, that is available. You can do live chats with collegiate librarians right online. So that's accessible. Uh, most any time of the day, of course, 1 a.m. is probably not going to be there with their fuzzy bunny slippers. But we do really have a lot of things set up to make your transition from high school to college successful. So I hope you will take advantage of a lot of the resources that we have. So I'm introduce Rainy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, now I'd like to introduce Rainy and Katie. They put something together to tell you a little bit about their experience. Um, and certainly you can feel free to ask them any questions, right? You're feel, you're yeah, question. really yeah. Cool. yeah, come, can you talk in the, like, stay so the mic can hear you? Okay. We're recording. Okay. 
All right. So, um, hi. Like Ms. Holloway said, my name's Katie. And I'm Rainey. <laughs> and we're juniors at Easton High. And we both recently took intro to psychology this past semester and really enjoyed the experience. Dual enrollment is very beneficial because it gives you insight into what college will actually be like. Yeah. yeah. And um, <laughs> I found the dual enrollment course structure to vary slightly from what I'd been used to in, in high school. College classes require more self-motivation. It's very important, as well as independent work outside the classroom. An advantage to this program was having dual enrollment offered directly at our school because it was very convenient and it was beneficial to only have two classes a week as it gave me more time to complete the work and it also gave me time to let the information sink in. Um, also adding on to that, it was like a refreshing schedule change because we had only had, like I had been used to having classes every single day, the exact same schedule and since these classes were only twice a week, it was like very different and I, I found it, I really liked it. Um, and I definitely recommend dual enrollment to any high schooler looking ahead to college. Thank you for your time. And are there any questions uh, or yeah, fears? You, you said you took intro to psychology. Mm -hmm. I'm taking psychology the same. It's course. like 150, I think. Okay. It's like same name. Any, else? any questions, questions at all? For anybody? <laughs> for anybody? I guess my biggest, what was your biggest fear going in? Going back to the fear theme. Mm -hmm. What was your individual biggest fear? Did you share some of the fears that they had? And um, were they alleviated? Mine was probably just like the workload. I was concerned that like I'd have too much and I couldn't manage it. But all you have to do is just like manage your time and make sure you don't procrastinate mm -hmm. like you guys were saying. Yeah, time management is so important. And also, I think a big difference I noticed with college classes are sort of deadlines where in high school it's like, oh, you can turn this in yeah. when you finish it. And then we're in college, it's like, this is due at 11.59 on this day. She's looking at me because, yeah, <laughs> no, yeah. my policy is very, very strict. I am very, yeah. I, I, I don't, maybe I don't transition you very smoothly into that. But, yeah, oh, it's, no. it's due when it's due. And, yeah. and there's no, my dog ate it, I had a small car <laughs> fire, you know, it's due when it's due. Um, yeah. So. And you get, you get, well, because I took Miss Holly's course, and you have plenty of time to complete mm -hmm. it because she opens up the modules um, sometimes a week in advance so you have plenty of time um, and one time it just slipped my mind and I missed a quiz and uh, that was it I didn't I didn't get a grade for the quiz um, I did so uh, quiz, though. <laughs> yeah I, so it's it okay but it's just like deadlines are mm -hmm. <laughs> deadlines do late, exist but I got to yeah. And I think so. you know, those are the things again that those are the things again that it's a learning experience. And the one thing that I encourage you guys to do, and we didn't we didn't really mention it, and I could probably talk to you and give you little snippets of advice like for an hour. But the one thing I encourage you to do is really accept responsibility and take accountability. The worst thing in the world is to come in, I can't tell you how many, and you guys seem to say things in emails that you would not really say to my face, um, but I get some of these emails that like, well, you, 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 and if you, and if you, and you, and I'm thinking, there is no I anywhere, yeah, yeah, there's no I anywhere in there, and, and it goes a long way if you could just say, you know what, like Katie was so honest about it, she was like, I just missed it. I. I spaced it, I, yeah. you know, and I think that's a huge part of taking a step forward is accountability and, and taking responsibility for that. And that goes a long way, at least it goes a long way with me. Um, and I think it goes a long way with a lot of your professors that it's not just the blame game here. We're not just, you know, and we're trying to help, so. And let's be clear, you have an emergency. So in other words, if you were genuinely sick and in the hospital or, right. you know, unfortunately grandmother passed away like that obviously is excusable and we will work with you yeah. but it's just that I rolled over and then it was <laughs> you like coming that is is kind of where we're trying to prepare you for quote unquote the real world mm -hmm. okay we we gotta go. Okay, we gotta go. We're cutting us off. We're very excited to welcome you all. Just I'm very excited for you. Please stop by, utilize your professors. We're here to help you, not be a roadblock to your success, okay? Woo! Thanks. Okay, I think we're going to the other class. It was very nice to see you. I hope you enjoyed. All right, we're going. You know, we can clap all night. You know, we're instructors. We're, we're faculty. We can talk all night. Do we need to? 
My name is Marcy Leach. I'm the Director of Student Recruitment and Outreach. And we have Mr. Paul Wheeler, who is our Director of Multicultural Affairs. And we also have Megan Galvin, who is our Student Ambassador and a student here at Chesapeake College. So what we want to talk to you a little bit about, you've had the instructors talk to you about what it means to be dual enrollment student, you know, kind of what you can expect in a classroom. We're going to, guess, we're going to actually give you the overview. So we're taking like one step back to talk to you about what is dual enrollment, who can participate, kind of giving you the overview of why your students are here. So dual enrollment um, is for juniors and seniors in high school. You have to be at least 16 years old and have a cumulative grade point average of 2.5 or above. Every semester, we get a dual enrollment certification form that verifies all this stuff with us. You guys have all seen it because you guys have all signed that for your dual enrollment student. So why choose Chesapeake? We think Chesapeake is, of course, a great option for everybody. We have over 70 college majors. In addition to that, a lot of students are going to come to us to transfer to a four-year college. We have an average class size of about 18 students. How many folks do you think, if you went to University of Maryland, how many folks do you think would be in maybe one of your general education classes? 120, maybe 200. I mean, you're talking a large group of people. So you're not going to get that one-on-one -on -one like you would. The instructors that were just here, they might know you by number. They might know maybe your face, but they're not going to have that same level of contact with you at some of the larger colleges. So we like to think of Chesapeake College as you get the private school experience at a community college price. In addition, we have some really neat programs like the Honors Program that gives you increased flexibility in your learning options. We have evening classes. We have online classes. So there's a lot of different formats that could work for you. So let's talk a little bit about what kind of classes a dual enrollment student can take. How many folks here had a real fun time with the AccuPlacer? <laughs> Didn't think there were many. The AccuPlacer, what is the AccuPlacer? You guys know what this is. What is the AccuPlacer? You all took it. Excellent. I wish I had some candy to throw out, but I do not. But you're absolutely right. It's a, it's a placement test. So SATs, ACTs, Chesapeake College uses the AccuPlacer. The AccuPlacer is what we use to tell us where you are in your English and your math skills. Okay. All the students in here that are in dual enrollment have taken the AccuPlacer. Are there exceptions to that? Yes, there are exceptions. If you've taken the SATs and you scored a 550 or higher in English or math, you scored, taken the ACT and you scored a 21, or if you've taken AP classes, then you are exempt from those portions of the AccuPlacer. Other than that, every student has taken the AccuPlacer. So what does that mean? Well, that lets us know where we're going to place you in English and math. Okay, that tells us whether you're college ready in those areas. So students, if they want to take an English or they want to take a math, they need to test into that, or they need to have the SAT, ACT scores to show that they're ready in those areas. So for students that maybe did not place into those, because some juniors did not, and that's okay, you still have a whole variety of classes that you can take, general education stuff. And if you guys have questions at any point along the way, just raise your hand. This is meant to be very interactive, okay? Just shout it out, because we're here to make sure that you understand the information we're sharing. So students that are in high school, they can be working towards an associate's degree or certificate while they're in high school. And we actually have some students who will earn an associate's degree when they graduate high school. I mean, they are really, what they're doing is they're bundling AP classes with dual enrollment classes, and it is hard work, but they are making it happen. Okay, so parents a lot of times will ask us, well, what does dual enrollment mean, and how can my student use this to help themselves? So in college, we talk about classes. When we say one class, that's three credits, okay? So say, for example, you're a junior, senior, your fall semester, you take classes. Our classes run on Mondays and Wednesdays, or Tuesdays and Thursdays, and we don't have classes on Friday, okay? So say, for example, your fall semester, you take psychology on Monday and Wednesday. Say you take communication on Tuesday and Thursday. At the end of that semester, you now have six college credits, okay? Six college credits. Say you repeat that same thing in the spring. You take two more classes, one on Monday and Wednesday, one on Tuesday and Thursday. You now have six more college credits, okay? One semester, a full-time student is considered full-time when you have 12 college credits. So just by that scenario we talked about, at the end of that year, you now have one semester of college. That's huge. So instead of going now, say you're going to a four-year college, instead of going to four years now, you're going three and a half. 
because you've just gotten done one whole semester while you're in high school. That's huge. Do the same thing that next year if you're a junior. At the end of that, you have 24 credits. You have one year of college done. That's pretty impressive. And it's very doable. It's very doable, OK? Students are doing it all the time. Most of our dual enrollment students from certain counties, they are taking two classes, OK? They're taking a class on Monday, Wednesday, one on Tuesday, Thursday, and they're just racking up those college credits, all right? OK. Why does that matter? Well, it matters a lot because most students, I know most of the students I talk to are going to be paying for their own college in some way, shape, or form, OK? You guys have probably all looked at college price tags. You've seen what they cost, OK? They're not, they're not cheap. So all colleges require usually the first two years are general education classes, your basic stuff, OK? Your English, your math, your science, the general education classes. All colleges, you're going to have some of that the first two years, OK? This just gives you an idea of what colleges cost. Most of you, if, you have, if you're a senior in the classroom, you, you know all this stuff. You have seen it because you've been looking at it. You see what colleges cost. Washington College, that's just an example of a private university. That can run you somewhere at $50,000 a year. Okay? That is with room and board, but you're looking at about 50 grand a year. Salisbury University, that's a public university, public four-year college. You're looking at about maybe sixteen dollars to $17,000 a year. Okay? For those same classes, those same general education classes, you could take them at Chesapeake College for a little over $3,000. That's a huge savings. All right. So we talked a little bit about that, about why students are doing dual enrollment, um, what it means to be a dual enrollment student, why dual enrollment student matters, and how it can help your student rack up college credits and what that can mean to them. So now let's talk a little bit about what they need to do before classes start, OK? So you all, when I came out to the, to the high schools to register, you, you've all probably seen me during the interest meetings, during registration. When we registered you, we gave you that little yellow receipt that said, here's your classes. And I reminded you to make sure that when you get that statement from the college, you match them up. OK? And that matters because that's giving you your course number and your section number. That's how your class is going to be referred to. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more in detail in a second. But that's how we identify your class, by your course number, by your section number. So you need to know that. That's important stuff. You need to know when and where your class meets. OK? Is it Monday, Wednesday? Is it Tuesday, Thursday? Um, evening classes are typically one night a week. Dorchester County students, if I have any Dorchester County students that are taking classes in the spring, you guys are taking evening classes. OK? So they're one night a week. And are they at the Y Mills campus, or are they going to be at the Cambridge campus? Most of you guys here are probably coming to the Y Mills campus, or your classes are dedicated, meaning that they're in your high school. Alrighty. So what is your course number and section number? This is what you're going to find on your statement. This is what you're going to find outside of our classrooms. You're going to see the little slip of paper that's outside of the door that has all these numbers on it. What's your course number and section number? That's telling you what classes are held in that classroom. So course name, abbreviated, course number, and course section. Okay? Good information for you to know. That's how you're also going to find out what textbook you need. Okay? So that's very important information for you. I also tell students, a lot of first-time students are, are a little intimidated by Chesapeake's campus, and we understand that. We come here every day, so we're used to it. But we also understand that new students, it can be a little bit scary. There's one great big circle that goes around the campus, just one great big circle. And most of our buildings are on the inside of that circle. So you have a campus map in your little packet that I gave you there. So just become familiar with the college campus. You're welcome to come here and walk around. You're welcome to come here, identify your building before your classes start so that you do feel comfortable for that first day of class. Important buildings for you guys to know. The Learning Resource Center, OK? That's a place where you can get um, academic support. That's where tutoring is. We're going to talk a little bit more about that. But the Learning Resource Center, important building for you to know. Um, Ca Caroline Center, that's where food is. That's where the cafeteria is. That's where the bookstore is. So important building for you guys to know. I will point out to you that over on the far left, where you see athletic fields and that building right in front of it is, is the, uh, the athletic building is actually under renovation. And that parking lot next to it is closed. So you guys want to give yourself some extra time when you come here because it's going to be tight. The first day of school, it's going to be tight for parking. So just give yourself a couple extra uh, minutes there. Any questions so far? OK, we'll just keep on rolling. You also want to know who your instructor is. That information is on your schedule. It's also on our, our um, catalog and our computer. Um, and you, so you want to know who they are in case you need to communicate with them. You met two of them, OK? So they're going to tell, they'll probably talk to you about how to get in touch with them, where do you go to get the information. So you want to know who your instructor is. 
Before classes start, do they talk to you about your textbook and the importance of having your textbook? A little bit about that. So you do need a textbook for all your college classes. A uh, couple places where you can get those, certainly from our bookstore. The information you need about your textbook is located at our website. You can go into your course, click information about textbook, and it brings up a picture, the title, the edition. The most important thing is the ISBN number. The ISBN number is that unique identifier for that book for that edition, okay? So, and it also tells you, okay, you can buy that book new, you can buy that book used, you can rent that book new, you can rent that book used, and it gives you all the prices if you want to do that through our bookstore. Our bookstore is a Barnes & Noble. Okay, it's here on campus, but it's a Barnes & Noble. So it's going to give you all that information. And if you want to buy it right there and then, it'll tell you how to do that. Okay, so you can certainly do that. Another option is, I tell students, you're welcome to go to one of your online book providers and see if they also have that book. I would caution you, though, that if you are buying them online from Amazon or another source, make sure you're using that right ISBN number. Very important, because it gives you the right edition. So the book information is available online. If you have questions about where to find that, just call us or email us, and we'll help you with that. Alrighty. They talked to you about My Campus and how important that is and all the good information that's on there. So in your packet, you have a little brochure that gives you um, your login information. And I, and I don't want to repeat what the instructors talked about, so if they went into detail on this, I'll just kind of skip over it, okay? So your brochure, this is really important information. It tells you how to get on your Canvas portal. Gives you instructor contact. That's where you go for your grades. That's college information. And you guys all have a Skipjack email as well. We're going to communicate with you by your Skipjack email. Okay, that's how we get in touch with you. Registration, the billing office, your instructors, us. We're going to get to you by your Skipjack email. So make sure you're checking that on a regular basis. Good information for you guys to know. Okay, classes start on Tuesday, January 21st. Talba County Public Schools are closed but you still do have dual enrollment classes, okay? If something should change, we're gonna let you know, but as of right now, you still will have your class on Tuesday, even though the school is closed. And that's very important because you are a dual enrollment student, so you're actually covering, you're, you're following the high school calendar, your high school calendar, as well as a college calendar, okay? So that means that if you have spring break, but the college does not, you still have class. If the college has spring break, but you do not, okay, vice versa. Okay, so you're following two different calendars, so make sure you're aware of that. Um, make sure those, when you're in your class, your first day of class, talk to your instructor about that, because really it comes down to the conversations with them, okay? Every class is a little bit unique, every instructor is a little bit unique, so have those conversations with them. Okay, important stuff for you to know. In your little packet, you have an academic calendar, okay? Important dates are here for you, class start date, Tuesday, January 21st. Payment due date. Everybody should have paid by now. Okay, our payment due date was actually January 8th. However, if there are students in here, because it is confusing sometimes with all these bills and statements flying around, if you have not yet paid for your bill, you have to noon tomorrow to do that. Okay, so you're welcome to contact us tomorrow and talk to us about that. We can talk to you about deferred payment programs. We can talk to you about all kinds of stuff. So if you have not paid your bill, what typically would happen is you'd be dropping that class. Are you totally shut out forever and always? Nope. You would re-enroll, but we can't guarantee that spot's still in that class because some students are waiting for spots to open and they jump right on it, okay? So it doesn't mean that you're shut out of the class. We'll re-enroll you, but it might not be at the time and the date that you had wanted. So if you have not yet paid for your class or you have concerns about that, call us tomorrow. Yes, ma'am. Um, it depends on your class. A lot of classes here in the Kent Humanities Building, but they could also be on different um, classes. Now, are you coming? If you're dedicated, they're at Easton High School. I'm coming here on Monday and Wednesday. Okay. Probably would be here. Yeah. yeah. Course withdrawal dates. Okay. It's, it pay, it's good to pay attention to that. If it's not working out for you, have the conversation with your guidance counselor, okay? We issue what's called an early warning report three weeks into the semester that identifies any student that might not be attending class, that might have grades that are like less than desirable um, and we do that so we can intervene so we can give you what support services you might need okay maybe you're not understanding something the instructor is talking about maybe you're having problems with some content we intervene so that we can be a support system for you to help you be successful um, so we have that information 
You can withdraw from a class, okay, but you need to have a conversation with your guidance counselor. Because as I mentioned earlier, you're getting college credit and high school credit for the classes you're taking. If you withdraw from a college class, that affects your high school credit as well. So that's a conversation you need to be having with them. Midterms and finals, they're all on here as well. So important dates for you to know. Okay. So when you're, when you're a college student, um, we are not entitled to share information with anybody other than you unless you sign a document, a FERPA document. And basically all that means is, is that you are giving us permission, you the student are giving us permission to share with people you designate as acceptable people to share information with. So that's just the, the quick version of what the FERPA means. College students, we don't share anything with anybody, okay? Dual enrollment students, a little bit different. On the dual enrollment certification form that you signed and your student signed, your guidance counselor signed, and everybody signed, there's a, there's a statement on there that says, we authorize our dean of recruitment services as well as our vice president of recruitment to share certain information with certain people. Okay, and what does that mean? What does that information mean? It doesn't mean that you call up and just talk to anybody and they can tell you anything. It's very specific information. So with school counselors, because what you're doing here at the college affects your high school as well, we're going to share with them your schedule. We're going to tell them the courses you've registered for and if you're completing them. We're going to talk to them about your grades, your midterms, your finals. We do that so that if you are having problems, they can intervene and help too. Okay? They, they want you to be successful, so they want to intervene if they need to. Overall attendance, are you coming to class? They need to know that stuff. Tuition, fees, cost of books, we're sharing that with them so that they can help provide financial services if they need to. Academic problems or concerns, transcripts, registration information. So this is the kind of things we can share with your guidance counselor. So what can we share with the parents? Again, very different. If you were a student at Chesapeake College, we couldn't share anything with your parents unless you gave us authorization to do that. However, what we can share with your parents is general information. What did you register in? You know, grades, midterms, and finals, not specific grades on a specific test, but we can give them an overall feeling of how you're doing in the class. We can talk to them about tuition and fees because they're probably still paying your bills for you. So we can talk to them about those things. Academic problems or concerns, registration information, and class schedule. But we can only do this because you're a dual enrollment student and you have given us permission by signing that form to do so. All right, what can we not share? Just as important. So again, if you call up as a parent and say, how did, how did my daughter do on that test? I know she studied really hard. We're going to say, I'm sorry, we can't disclose that to you. The first thing we're going to say if you call us is we're going to say, have you talked to your student? Okay? And, and, and that needs to be your first point of contact. Parents, I'm a parent. You know, you want to know what's going on. Your first point of contact, you need to talk to your student. That's the first question we're going to ask you. But we can talk to you about um, very specific things, I mean very general things, but we're not going to talk to you about specific grades. We can't talk to you about conversations between students and instructors, and we're not going to suggest you contact an instructor. We're going to highly frown upon that because your student, while they're still in high school, they need to start being their own advocate. When they get into college, they need to be their own advocate because you're not going to be able to intervene for them. So it's important they start to get these skills now. Um, we can't talk to you about specific, if they came on a certain day or if they were late. Okay, we can't have those conversations with you. We can tell you overall, are they coming, are they not, but we can't talk to you about very specific things. We cannot share their passwords with you. Okay, a lot of parents want to go on and be able to see grades and things. We can't give that information to you. We're going to say, have you asked your student for that information? So being a dual enrollment student, you are a college student. So we can disclose some things, but we certainly cannot share everything. If you have questions about that, we, we tell you, please contact Kathy Petrochenko. She's our Dean for Recruitment Services, and she would be the one to talk to you if you had questions in detail about those type of regulations. Any questions about that? We're throwing a lot at you. Yes? Was it different than before? Is this something that's new? That's not, it's nothing new. Nope, we've always been doing this. Um, and let me just back up and say the reason why we're doing the dual enrollment orientations, this is the first time we've done this. The reason we're doing this is because we are finding that um, dual enrollment students in particular are going into the classroom and they're not prepared yet to be a student. Um, and that means they don't even know they have a skipjack email, they don't know how to get on my campus. Um, there's a lot of things they just don't realize. Um, and it really puts them at them a very unique disadvantage. Um, that's not fair to them as a student. Get, they get very antsy and concerned. That's not fair to you as a parent because you see their frustration. That's not fair to the instructor because they want to help them, but they haven't gotten the basic information. So what we're sharing with you guys now is information that's going to help you be successful very first day of class. Okay? 
Okay. This is a question that always comes up. What happens if there is bad weather? Um, if you are coming here to the college campus, you want to make sure you're checking our website, listening to the radio TV, call our main line, okay? If you have any concerns, lots of resources. <laughs> Dedicated classes, you need to be having those conversations with your instructor, okay? First day of class. All right, so you're here and you need help, you're just not getting it. What do you do and where do you go? I mentioned earlier in the Learning Resource Center, that is the location of our academic support center. You as a college student, um, do not pay extra for tutoring services. If you need help with a specific course, um, specific information, you don't want to go in there and just say, I need help with math, but you can go in there and say, I'm having problems with ratios, I just don't know how to do this, and they can help you with specific things. So drop in tutoring, um, supplemental instruction, there is no charge to you because you are a college student. So I encourage you to take um, advantage of those resources. Okay. so. Some other things you need to know to be successful as a college student. You guys are creating your college transcript. So if the class is not working out for you and you're just not getting it, um, I would highly advise you to make sure you're talking to folks because if you fail a class, it doesn't go away when you graduate high school. It follows you on your college transcript. Okay, So you're actually creating your college transcript. Learn the college schedule. On this academic calendar, it tells you all the information you need, midterms, finals, everything you need to know. Make sure you use the college portal. I would advise when you go home tonight, tomorrow, try to go on there and uh, try to see if you can access the information. If you have problems, there's resources on here that you can call. Call us or call the helpline, but make sure you can get on your college portal before classes start. Okay, don't wait to the first day of class to try to get on because then you're already behind the eight ball. So make sure you're checking your Skipjack email, okay? Again, that's how we communicate with you. Um, don't fall behind your coursework. If you're having problems, ask your instructor. They would were, they were always be there to help you. Okay, also in your packet, and you guys have probably already seen this because I've handed this out at the interest meetings. It is our text listserv. If you would like to receive general reminders about dual enrollment, it's not county specific, but just general reminders about, hey, don't forget, we have midterms coming up, don't forget, you know, finals. You can send your information. You're going to text that code to that number. I don't have access to anybody's individual cell phone numbers. This is a total push out. I can't pull any numbers in. Yes? Does that include, like, weather? It will not. That's a great question. It's not going to include weather. No, nope, yeah. it's not. But, but we always tell folks go to our website because that has the most accurate, up-to-date information. And the reason it doesn't is because what might affect one county doesn't affect another county. And this listserv is generic information for all five counties. So it's going to be general information, information to. So if my college is away from like snow, like, or like snow, that's not going to be sent out? No, it won't be sent out by, not by this listserv. But we do have a Twitter feed that you can follow. OK, so and that'll be um, more information to come. You can sign up for the Twitter feed, and they send information out by, by that uh, method. Also, going to our website is the best place to go. OK, good question. All right, so if you guys have questions, Lots of different resources out there to help you. Um, I always tell students, and some of you have probably, you've probably already contacted me like this, email is the fastest way to get me um, because I am in and out of the office so much, but I do have my email on my phone, so you're welcome to contact me anytime. A couple things that are here in a little fancy packet for you. Um, questions we get asked a lot is, you know, what are the differences between high school classes and college classes? This green sheet here, in some cases it's white, just has very general information of the differences between that because that is good information for you to know. There are some very distinct differences between high school and college classes. Um, in addition to that, just very quickly for you, we have a dual enrollment tip sheet. Okay, Great overview. Some of you probably already received this at the interest meetings, but good information for you to keep at hand. It has our contact information on the side here. And then also we have our view book. We really hope that you will consider coming to Chesapeake when you graduate. Um, we have a lot to offer in a lot of different ways. This is just a nice overview that talks about some of the things here at Chesapeake College that you would find of interest. Um, one thing in particular is all the different majors on the back here. We have a little bit of something for everybody. You have our contact information, so if you guys don't have any other questions tonight, but you go home tonight and you have questions, just give us a shout because you know we really do want you to succeed here at Chesapeake College, and we really hope that you join us as an incoming freshman once you graduate from high school. So thank you guys so much for coming. If you have any questions at all, please let us know. Great job. Thank Great you. job. I don't know what happened to me after the first time. I got the worst tip on my